Member statements. for Toronto St. Paul. Thank you, Speaker, for this opportunity, my first, to formally address the Legislature. I acknowledge the stolen First Nations land on which I stand. I rise in these chambers today because of the vibrant people of Toronto St. Paul's, our resilient campaign team, selfless volunteers, my mother, partner, mentors and friends who want to change for the better. I cannot thank them enough. Toronto St. Paul's is community strong. Toronto St. Paul's is Sage Goldenberg, a mother and small business owner who organized a local donation drive for Humewood House, a resource centre that empowers young, pregnant and parenting moms. Toronto St. Paul's is Julian Back and Kim Lesperance, local organizers behind the Feel Good Lane mural project commemorating the life of beloved resident Barry Feelgood Luxembourg, an MC with the local 512 hip hop crew. And lastly, Toronto St. Paul's is the late Charles Roach, human rights lawyer, activist, and founding member of the Black Action Defense Committee and Carabana. Tomorrow, our city will unveil the Charlie Roach Lane in our St. Clair West Hour area in his honour. As the first out black queer woman to sit in the Legislature, I am deeply thankful to all people and families in Toronto, regardless of how they voted. I am proud to serve all residents. I will continue to stand firmly in the name of social justice, equity, access and inclusivity. My goal to work hard, collaboratively with empathy, kindness and sound judgment so no one in Toronto St. Paul's feels left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. Member statements. Member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last June uh, 2017, I was elected in the Sault Ste. Marie by-election. And uh, from uh, my first day in office, I had made it clear that I would do everything in my capacity as the MPP for Sault Ste. Marie to try to secure the Ferrochrome Processing Facility, uh, which uh, stems from the Ring of Fire project that Norant Resources uh, Incorporated is working on. Within a few days of my election, I had developed a team and started conducting meetings with Norant executives here in Toronto, CEO of Algoma, Port of Algoma, community leaders. Uh, local Economic Development Corporation and city staff to develop a team to work on the Ferrochrome Processing Facility bid for Sault Ste. Marie. I even spent a day and night in each of the five uh, fly-in Matawa First Nation communities and visited the Ring of Fire itself. I did all this because I believed that Sault Ste. Marie was the best place to see this facility built. Our location at the centre of the Great Lakes, the synergies we hold with Algoma, and our brownfield site, I think, make us an excellent location for this facility. When I first started this, started this process, the Noran executives told me that they were not even looking at Sault Ste. Marie because of a process we had with the CCAA process going on at Algoma Steel in Sault Ste. Marie. I'm very pleased to say, Mr. Speaker, that the work that we did together in Sault Ste. Marie from my election on June 1st to November 1st had results, great results, and Sault Ste. Marie was given an opportunity to submit a bid for the Ferrochrome oh, Processing Facility. Awesome. From not being considered at all, we were allowed to submit a bid. But I'm ecstatic to report to you that last Friday, Noron indicated to us that we are now in the final two, along with Timmins, in consideration for the Ferrochrome Processing Facility. And I hope to stand before this chamber and announce our successful Thank you very bid much. in the future. Thank you. Member statements. The member for London Fanshawe. Speaker, today I address an important issue affecting my riding of London Fanshawe as well as the province affordable housing. In my own city of London, we recently faced a major loss to our already stretched social service agencies with the closure of the London Housing Registry. The London Housing Registry was a resource centre that assisted individuals and families on low or limited income to find affordable private market housing. They were the only resource of their kind in London. After 34 years of service, they had just, they've just closed their doors. They feel that given the low vacancy rates and a lack of affordable housing options, they are no longer able to provide the service their mandate entailed. We know that one in three people in London rent. This is higher than the provincial and national average, and almost 30 per cent of households are in core need of affordable housing, meaning they spend more than 30% of their household income on shelter. 
Without affordable housing options, families must turn to subsidized housing. Recent numbers show that nearly 3,400 families are on a wait list for subsidized, subsidized housing in London, and many remain on the, late, on the wait list for nearly eight years. Affordable housing is reaching a critical point in Ontario. I would like to thank the London Housing Registry for their 34 years of service to our community and make a promise to do my part to continue the spirit of their work and advocate for more affordable housing initiatives, inclusionary zoning regulations, and promoting legislation that supports renters and buyers in the largest expense on a family's budget. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs> member Statements. Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today in honour of the Hanover District Hospital Auxiliary, who this year celebrate their 95th anniversary. Auxiliary Volunteers are an important partner and resource within our health care community. Their mission is to provide support and comfort to the patients of Hanover and District Hospital. Additionally, the local auxiliary raises money to purchase medical equipment, such as a new dialysis chair and renovating restrooms on the cardiac rehab floor at the hospital to make them wheelchair accessible. CEO Katrina Wilson says the Hanover Hospital would be lost without its auxiliary. She says donations allow the hospital to take on projects that the hospital lacks funding for. The health care committee owes a great debt of gratitude to the auxiliary and their contribution to always support patient safety and care. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank members of the Hanover and District Hospital Auxiliary, as well as President and CEO Katrina Wilson and Board Chair Dave Cardwell and all of the auxiliary and board volunteers. Mr. Speaker, when I was Executive Director of Bruce Peninsula Health Services Foundation, I worked very closely with the auxiliary and saw firsthand the dedication, commitment and compassion that they show in their job to make health care better. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask my colleagues to join me in congratulating this exceptional group and the thousands of Hospital Auxiliaries Association of Ontario volunteers for their commitment and their continued service and dedication to their communities and to making health care the best it can be here in the province of Ontario. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You go, Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I believe it's the first time I've spoken with you in the chair, so congratulations on your victory. It's a pleasure to rise in the House today to deliver my first member's statement, and it's fortunate that it falls on the day of my ceremonial swearing-in, and I'd like to introduce my family, Brendan, Benoit, Melanie, and my mother, Jeanette, who are in the members' gallery right now. <laughs> Running for office was certainly one of the most monumental tax tasks I have ever taken on, and I would like to use this member's statement to thank everyone who dedicated so many hours, so much time, to helping me win the election. I'd like to recognize my family. They have been so supportive, so understanding. They have always been there for me, and that has meant so much to me. I'd also like to recognize my dedicated and talented campaign team. They helped me knock on thousands and thousands of doors and talk to tens of thousands of voters. Patrick, Leaf, Yardy, Amy, Alden, and Jason, I could have never done this without you. Mr. Speaker, our campaign was one that inspired. We had countless volunteers who poured time into hundreds and hundreds of hours of work, canvassing, phoning, putting up signs, and attending events like all the volunteers did for all the members who are here today. I thank you to all of Kingston for believing in me and believing that I could bring change for the better to Kingston and the islands, but most importantly, I would like to thank the constituents of Kingston and the islands for putting their faith in me here in this legislature. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Member Statements. Member for Ottawa, Vanier. Mr. President, c'est un grand Mr. Speaker, it's a great honour to speak in this House and to represent Ottawa Vanier. I'd like to thank all the residents in Ottawa Vanier for this great privilege. I the 42nd Parliament with all of you, and I look forward to representing my constituents of Ottawa Vanier. I want to use this statement to uh, say a couple of things about the disappointment of some of my constituents about some of the issues that were missing from this speech from the throne. There was little mention about the power of reconciliation with the Indigenous peoples of this land, and many of my constituents noticed that. Governing is certainly about giving people what they want, but it also is about ensuring that we do right by history. It's about also inspiring us to lead by example and reflect the best instincts of human beings. 
my constituents also recognized that there wasn't a single French word in the speech from the throne, and they were in uh, certain respect insulted by this. Uh, and we, I, uh, many of my constituency raised the issue that very little has been said about housing. We need affordable housing, affordable housing for seniors, affordable housing for newcomers, affordable housing for disabled people. We need more affordable housing. There's an opportunity because the federal government has a national housing strategy, and I hope the government will take part in this housing strategy. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Well, thank you, Speaker. What an incredible privilege it is to be able to stand in this House, the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, for the purpose of addressing issues of, of importance that arise in our beautiful province. I cannot thank the constituents of Niagara West. West enough for the trust they have placed in me to represent them in this House. I wish to thank my strong and capable campaign team, volunteers and family for their trust and support and the encouragement they provide me. On June 7th, the voters of Niagara West and Ontario elected a strong government for the people. A government that will listen to the people, not the insiders. A government that will work for taxpayers, work for job creators and work for families across our great province. For 15 years, Speaker, the people of Ontario had a government that unfortunately refused to listen to everyday Ontarians. But today, help is here with a government for the people. As I promised when first elected in 2016, my top priority will be the interests and concerns of the families and job creators in Niagara West. From fighting for a much-needed West Lincoln Memorial Hospital in Grimsby to scrapping the Kathleen Wynne sex ed curriculum and fighting for lower taxes, cheaper gas, and better jobs in Niagara West and across our wonderful province. I can't wait to get to work with my colleagues in the PC party to get Ontario back on track so we can once again proudly say that we are the economic powerhouse of Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I apologize to the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations on your victory. Mr. Speaker, it is with great honour and privilege I rise today for the first time in this legislature. I'd like to take this moment to thank the hard-working people of Scarborough Southwest for placing their trust in me to be their voice in this legislature. I thank my family, my friends, and the wonderful community members who worked tirelessly for months making this campaign and making history. And I am proud, I'm proud to be the first Bangladeshi Canadian to be elected in Canada to a House of Parliament. We, we defeated politics of cynicism with hope and love. And my home riding of Scarborough Southwest, where we have treasures like the Scarborough Bluffs, is a diverse riding with people from all over the world, including residents who have had to leave homes in Northern Ontario, including uh, Canadian Atlantic provinces, or the Philippines, Caribbean, China, Africa, South Asia, moving here to access jobs, education, healthcare, and for a better life. While the Premier's throne speech failed to address critical issues in our province, such as reconciliation, environment, equity, and the immigrant dream, I am confident that with the incredibly talented NDP caucus, one of the largest official oppositions in history, we will hold this government accountable and make sure that, the, that we protect Ontario citizens. The immigrant dream brought many of us, our parents, our grandparents, here to find shelter to this native land of our First Nations and, and Indigenous people. It is our duty. It is our duty to make sure that we help make that dream a reality while respecting the rights of the people of this land. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Stevens, the member for Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with humility and a sense of appreciation that I stand here today to make my very first remarks in this chamber. I represent two old counties in Ontario, but in a new riding. Hastings and Lennox and Addison played lead roles in the first decades of this province and of this country. Starting in 1784, my two counties produced leading figures, both in Ontario and Canada. Sir Johnny MacDonald is just one of the local legends whose steps that I have to follow, sadly. <laughs> but like Sir John A's LMA, I am one of the few privileged to have served municipally, uh, federally in the House of Commons, and now here, so proudly, 
in this Legislative Assembly of Ontario. So, folks, it's very, very good company. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I watched, though, with pride, in our province, as a number of new members from across the aisles here and in my own party made their first remarks. And they distinguished themselves in their eloquence and their passion. I think it bodes well for, for our nation, for our province, to have representatives like this. So I tip my hat to the MPPs who have risen to speak before me this week, and of course to the entire class of 2018, Bolianya. The public spoke collectively in June, though, and the bell they rung has now been answered by this government. On a more somber note, though, I would like to play tribute to George Beer, a loyal friend who passed away yesterday. George was the Hastings community powerhouse. He served Thurlow as a longtime Reeve and a counselor for the city of Belleville. On Sunday, he attended his last political event, a thank you afternoon at my house. So thank you, George. A strong conservative to the end. My thoughts with you, Betty, your entire family. Rest in peace. God bless. Welcome. statements. Member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, when the weather gets hot and sunny, many summer festivals kick off around the province. And Chatham, Kent Leamington is no stranger to fun and festivals that bring people and communities together. I call it in the good old summertime. Do you want to walk the streets of downtown Chatham and view vintage cars? You can do that during Chatham's Retrofest. Since we're almost in cherry season, you can enjoy the festivities during Blenheim's Cherry Fest. You can even have some fun by participating in their pit spitting contest. You know, Speaker, according to previous champions, there is a technique to get distance when pit spitting. Uh, by the way, I haven't done very well, but I and many others have had a lot of good laughs along the way. One of my favorite festivals is the Rib Fest. I think it's because most of the time I get called upon to be one of the judges. And those ribs and their different sauces are so good. But the highlight this summer will be the international plowing match scheduled to run from September 18th to the 22nd here in Chatham-Kent. I'll be working closely with two of my colleagues, Bob Bailey from Sarnia-Lampton and Monty McNaughton from Lampton-Kent Middlesex. The IPM draws people from all over Ontario and I suspect we'll have visitors from the USA as well. It's a great opportunity uh, for our area to showcase from an agricultural perspective the various fruits and vegetables grown locally as well as vendors to show their ways. Even MPPs from all over Ontario will be visiting the Maple City for opening ceremonies, mark it on your calendar, on the 17th of September. As you can see, Speaker, there's a lot happening in Chatham-Kent Leamington, the good old summertime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.